I am continuing with my series on making the platonic solids in Creoparametric. In this video, I'm going to make a regular octahedron, which is a solid with eight faces and all the edges are the same length. So to make this octahedron, let me start out by going to the new button to create a brand new part. I'm going to call this octahedron Creo 7, seeing as I'm making this in Creo 7, so that hopefully a lot of people will be able to use it. I'm not going to use my default template. I'm going to use one of the ones that I have that are in inches. Let me click the OK button. And let me turn on my datum plane display. For my octahedron, I'm going to start with a square and then extrude it. Let me select the datum plane called top. Then I will choose sketch from the mini toolbar. Let me turn off my plane display to unclutter the screen. Then I will go to the rectangle drop down and create a center rectangle. I'll lock it in right at the center and let it snap to being perpendicular. And here I have the dimension. I'll try double clicking on it and then changing this to a value of one. Let me refit everything. Come on dimension, why are you all the way up there? Let me zoom in on this. And so this is good for my sketch. I will hit the check mark and then let me refit it to the screen. With the sketch still selected, I can hold down the right mouse button in order to get to the extrude command from the mini toolbar. And I'm going to extrude this symmetric in both directions. I will right click over the depth drag handle and choose symmetric and I'll use a value of two. And then this is good. In another video when I created a tetrahedron, I added draft here, but for reasons that will come clear in a moment, I'm going to add the draft as its own separate feature. So I will hit the check mark and then I will turn on my plane display once more because I'm going to need one of my planes in a moment. Let's click on the draft tool and I could pick the four vertical sides one by one, or I can tap the right mouse button once, tap it twice. Here I have the body, tap it one other time. Here I have the intent surfaces. In other words, the vertical surfaces associated with that extrude. And then I will hold down my right mouse button in order to get to the draft hinges collector. I'm going to draft using the datum plane called top. That's right in the middle. But I actually want to split it using that hinge. So let me turn off my plane display for a moment. If you go to the split tab, we can change from no split to split by draft hinge. And I want to have the same angle on both sides. So I will change to draft sides independently. I'm going to drag this into a big value. And the exact value that it should have, well, let me just hit the check mark because I'm going to use a relation in order to drive that. And so let me start out by selecting the draft feature in the model tree. And then I will go to the edit dimensions command just because I want to change the name of this dimension. I always like changing the names of dimensions. Let's call this one draft. And let me then deselect. To get to my relations, I can go to the model intent overflow menu and choose relations. And let me get rid of that one in there. Let me choose my draft dimension. So this angle is going to be equal to the arc tangent. And to get to the arc tangent function, if you're not familiar with it, here it is, a tan. I will double click on it. Let me add some spaces for readability. And so I did the trig, did a little bit of math, and figured out that this needs to be the arc tangent of 0 0.5. It's really 0 0.5 times the edge length, but I used an edge length of 1 on purpose. 0 0.5 divided by the square root of 0.5. And so for the square root function, well, if you're not familiar with that one, I will scroll down in the list of functions. It is SQRT. I will double click on that. And it's the square root of 0 0.5. Add some nice spaces for visibility. And there's one other thing that I'm going to do. I want to make sure that's using the exact 
value of this expression. It's not getting rounded off to like 13 decimal places or something. So I'm actually going to put the square root of 0 0.5 in another set of parentheses. So this is good. Let me hit the verify button and I did not make any typos. So let's click the OK button and then OK and hit the regenerate button. And so now I have my regular octahedron. If I go to the analysis tab, I can verify it by measuring the length of some of the edges. So for example, I pick this edge over here. Hey, it's a length of one. Pick this edge, it's a length of one. Pick this edge, one. This edge, one. This edge, one. So that way I can verify that, yep, this is a regular octahedron. And be aware that this is not the only way to make it. I know people comment like, hey, you know, why don't you just do a blend, bro? Well, you can do the blend if you actually know where the two different points are supposed to be in this one. Just to give you a hint, it's supposed to be at a height of a square root of 0 0.5 times the edge length. And this is to support the MathCAD Community Challenge. So I am also going to report the surface area and the volume for this one. Let me go to the Annotate tab. Oh wait, actually before I do that, I need to assign a material. Let me right click on here and go to Edit Materials. I'll just grab the Legacy Steel material, right click on it, set it as the master, and then click the OK button. That way I'll be able to calculate my mass properties. Uh, actually, before I create my annotation, I need to calculate the volume and the surface area. So let's go to the mass properties command and I'll just hit the preview button in here to get the different values. Let's change this to a feature for the coordinate system. Let me make sure I have one selected. And from the feature tab, I just need the volume and the surface area. Let me make the name of the feature a little simpler to remember. Just call it mass and then click the OK button. And so now I have my parameters that I can report on the screen. Let's go to the annotate tab and let me show that length dimension in the model as well. I'll go to sketch and then show annotations. And let's show this one annotation over here. Click the OK button. I could change the orientation so it's vertical. Ah, that's fine there. There you can see. Uh, but let's add in our note that will report the volume and the surface area. Let's go to the, let's see, flat to screen. Let's go to the unattached note. And I will click here on the screen to locate it. And so let's do the surface area first. Let's type in surface area for the text. And then the colon key. And then I will use the ampersand in order to extract a parameter value. I happen to know that the one for surface area is surf underscore area. And then I will use a colon and FID, that's short for feature identification. You can either, either use the name of the feature or the feature's number. Well, I don't know the number, but I know its name. That's why I called it mass. And then let's do the same thing for the volume. And I will type in volume, colon, FID, oops, forgot the ampersand, ampersand, volume, colon, FID, underscore, mass. Oh, yeah, one other thing. I want this to go out to three decimal places, so I will do an open bracket, 0.3, and then close bracket. That's how you can control the number of decimal places. So there I have it in there. Just to make sure that the other one goes to three decimal places. I can go into the text editor and that add that in manually as well. Can't talk today. Okay, click the OK button. And let's make this a little bit bigger so that you can see it. Punch in a value of 8. And so there you can see for something with an edge length of 1, the relative... Uh, surface area and volume in a given set of units for a regular octahedron.